What's up everybody? Today I want to show you just some quick benchmarks of the AMD 1700X with the DDR4 running at 3200MHz. Now I know some people have uh, been having issues getting the memory up to high frequencies. Uh, I guess I was pretty lucky. I'm running a Trident Z 3000MHz kit so I was actually able to exceed the rated clock speed on that. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys my system and show you the settings and all that and then just give you some quick benchmarks and maybe you can replicate it. Uh, so uh, here we go. So the board I'm using is the ASUS Crosshair 6 uh, and then I have the Trident Z RGB DDR4 that is rated for 3000 megahertz. And then if we come up here you can see in Windows I have it running at 3200 and it's 16 gigs. I only have two sticks in there. I'm not running four. I'm guessing that would probably impact the clock speeds that I'm able to reach. And then my CPU, since I'm only running the 212 EVO, I was only able to achieve 3.98 GHz, which isn't that impressive of an overclock. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into the BIOS now and show you guys the settings that I use to achieve these clock speeds. And then I'll just do some screen capturing and show you guys some benchmarks. Okay, so the first thing to note here is that I am using the beta BIOS that was released on March 1st for the Crosshair 6. And then I did adjust my memory timings a little bit. They are a little bit looser, but I set the frequency to 3200 MHz, as you can see there. And if we go to timing control, my timings are as follows, 16, 18, 18, 38, 56, which is in line for the XMP. 3000 megahertz profile for this RAM and those are the settings I use there the only other tweak I made was I raised the DRAM voltage up to 1.35 volts and then I modified the power settings for that as you can see uh, the current capability is left at 100% Phase control was on extreme by default, so I left it there, and then everything else is at auto right now. So let's go ahead and jump into some benchmarks. Okay, so as you can see, we're back in Windows now, and we're still running at 3200 MHz. I said I was going to do a screen capture, but I decided I didn't want to impact the benchmarks by doing a screen recording, so I'm just going to go ahead and capture this off screen. Now the first benchmark I'm going to run is Cinebench R15, and then I'm going to run Geekbench and 3D Mark Firestrike. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Run there on the CPU. 16 threads. This renders pretty quickly. Synthetics and rendering is one area where Ryzen definitely outshines its competition especially at this price point. Alright, and I actually just uh, posted my highest score of 1747, but right below that you can see the two other scores that I got at 3.98 GHz, and those were also done at a RAM speed of 3200 MHz. So pretty consistent, overall pretty good, and I think that if I had a more ideal power delivery and better cooling, I could probably hit some higher clock speeds on the CPU as well. But there's the first benchmark running at 3200 MHz RAM and next I'm going to go ahead and load up uh, Geekbench I'm, I'm not, oh, I should have saved that score but oh well alright so next up we have Geekbench 4 and then this one takes a little bit longer to run so I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the video while the benchmark runs Okay, and here's our results now. So, I'm going to go ahead and scroll through these kind of slowly, and based on if it's readable or not, I'll just leave them in here just as is with the off-screen recording. Um, if you can't read the numbers, then I'll probably just put in a screen cap so that it's a little bit easier to read. Now, what's probably going to be most interesting is the memory information, the latency and bandwidth, 
And this is higher than what I had with my 5820K, but I was only running 8 gigs of 2400 dual channel with that. And I'll be posting some more benchmarks later on of this 1700X versus my 1520K, or sorry, 5820K, especially in regards to gaming and not just synthet synthetics. So the last thing I'm going to go ahead and run is 3 Mark Fire Strike. Now I'm going to go ahead and just skip to the physics section. Alright, so we just loaded up the physics test. And as you can see here, we're running at a very strong 65, I would say. Now, when I ran this stock, there was a lot of stuttering. And I'm not sure what was causing that. But now that I've overclocked the system, that stuttering seems to have gone away. And I'm getting a much higher overall frame rate. And as you can see, the test is already over. So I'm going to go ahead and let the combined run now, and then I will show you guys the results screen. So here's our results. We got a physics score of 20,144, and we had a average frame rate of 63.95. Now that's all the benchmarks that I'm going to run today, but um, stay tuned, and I'll be posting a video soon where I run some gaming benchmarks and also synthetics in comparison to my overclocked 5820K. Well, thanks for watching.